G'day guys, in today's video I'm opening up a Acer Nitro N50-600 and if we zoom down here, you'll see some specs. So Windows 10, an i7-9700, a GTX 1660 Ti, 16GB VDR4, two hard drives, DVD burner, card reader, and a wireless card. So, how do we get this open? Pretty straightforward on this one. On the back of the case, we'll be looking at two Phillips screws. One located here, and one located down a bit past my thumb. So you're gonna need just a standard Phillips head screwdriver. In and twist. So standard Phillips head screw. So put that off to the side, do the same further down which I'll do off camera. And once you've done that, all we should have to do is grab this latch right here and pull backwards, like that. And when we go to realign it later, see these various grooves here, basically loosely sit it over it, slight gap, rattle it around a bit and push forward. Let's check out and see what we have inside. So I will angle you guys slightly better. There we go. And to begin with, we have a 80 watt power supply. It looks to be running at 500 watts by FSP. So power supply is perfectly fine. Well, bronze rating 80 plus. And let's have a look further down. So we see a relatively stock-ish looking cooler. It's not, qu not quite the stock Intel cooler, but definitely a fairly basic cooler for that i7. If we zoom in a bit further, and if I rotate this, lap, this desktop, we can see down here a wireless card. So if I move this little block out of the way, which just flips up, we can see the graphics card right here, the 1660 Ti, which is an ITX model. And I might remove that. So this is if you're going to upgrade your graphics card. What we're gonna to have to do is get to this stage here and we'll disconnect the power. There is a small little cable here that you pinch. And when you do it, there's a bit of plastic which will tilt out. So pinch it, pull it backwards and that is now disconnected the eight pin power that's here. If we're lucky, and you need it, there is also another six pin there. Now from here, we'll flip this latch over. Not quite yet, sorry. Take out these two Phillips head screws. Now we can flip that over, and there's a little latch in the bottom, right at the very base of this. So I'm gonna push that down, and the graphics card lifted up slightly. Now I'm gonna grab it evenly, for even force, and pull up, and we are out. Do not touch. Oh no. So fairly standard cooler. I will give that a bit of a blowout a bit later. But all fairly standard. But this is more so to be able to see what's in here. So we can see two RAM uh, four RAM slots in total. We can see a wireless card. Also, looking at the connectors on here, we'll hold judgment just for the minute. To get the RAM out, it's pretty straightforward as well. There's a little latch here which pushes back and forward. So I'm gonna go back on that one. And there's just a little slot here that you push into. So I'm gonna pull the RAM up. And there we go, it's popped out. If we go around here, what are we? We are some Samsung 8 gig, PC4 2666. And when we go to reinstall that, you'll notice there's a little notch here. That corresponds with a notch down on the slot. So if you line it up just right, you go the wrong way and try and push it in, it won't work. 
like that. Spin it around. We want to push in, loosely sit it in the slot itself. Then push down with force on the lower end towards the graphics card. And then push down at the top. When you push down at the top, the little latch flick up and make a bit of a click sound. So I'm going to try and do that now. Hopefully you guys can hear it. There we go. And basically when it's in right, you should be able to wiggle it and try and pull it up. It won't go up. Make sure you do push some pressure down afterwards to make sure it is seated properly. Next up, I want to have a look at, well actually, we'll have a look at the wireless card. So the wireless card in there, I'll take that out. You guys can have a peek. Just a, a very tiny Phillips head screw on that one. So the original screwdriver I was using would not work. So you will need a different screwdriver. So I'm using my very baby screwdriver here that's also magnetic. And one wireless card out. You can disconnect the antennas, I'm just going to leave them on for the time being. But if you do replace it, it should be basically angle it similar to your RAM. So that's sitting up on a 45 degree angle. You push down and it locks into position. There we go. And then we put our screw in. So what else can be upgraded? We can upgrade the graphics card, we can upgrade the wireless card, we can upgrade the RAM. The processor on this particular one can't really upgrade, being a 9700, there's really not much further to go. And if we go to the front here, I'm gonna go, whoop. Hopefully you can see these little latches at the front of the case. Just, so I'm gonna flick them up. Up, up, and the front of this going to move forward. So hopefully I can just pull on it and it will leave. Not quite. I do believe the DVD ROM has got it stuck. So I'm going to eject that. Little latch down here, which looks to eject it. I'm going to disconnect the cables. So there's two cables there, one power lead, that got it, and a SATA cable with no clip on it. So now with that gets pushed out, we have that removed. Now the front should come off. One, two, three, and pull. It's being, still being a bit stubborn. Might help if I disconnect the wireless USB down here. There we go. So from here, we've got a hard drive tray located here. I'm going to disconnect these two screws here. And one further down here. Both big Phillips heads. And I feel like there is a third just down here, which you can't quite see. And there is also one at the top. Now you can see. From here, there we go. You will need to disconnect your SATA cable here as well. There we go. And we have a Seagate 2 terabyte. So fairly standard, nothing special. So that can be upgraded if you like as well. Next up is getting to the NVMe drive. Now, sadly, I thought this case was going to conform to a normal standard. So I'm undoing three screws down the back front of this tray. I should be able to pull it out from there. Now, this should slide forward, like so. Sure isn't snagged on a cable. We have that removed. So we do see a bit of a warren of cables. This section down here is actually going to the front I/O directly. So if you tried to reshell this into a different case, you would be losing all your front I/O. It does look like you could use a header here. Well, I'm suspecting that that there is the header for the power button. 
So you could potentially repin that or migrate this into a different case, as this section here does look to be standard. What else have we got going on here? It does take a standard 24 and, and 4 for the main board. So you could potentially put it in a case, but you will be losing that front I.O. So that is something to be cautious of. Now if we dig a bit deeper, I'm going to use my same small Phillips head screwdriver and undo the SSD that's over here, which is a 256 gig one. I take that out and wiggle it back. It does seem to be a thermal pad underneath it. that it's actually stuck to it. So do be careful taking this out. There we go. You see that? We have one thermal pad block. I'm gonna take that off, put it back down here. So we have an SK Hynix NVMe. There you go, there's a model number or the brand and model. So it's only a 256, so at the moment I'm taking it apart to clone this, so I will we'll take that out and clone it, and then we'll get it back together. But also we have one spare SATA cable, so we have one NVMe, we have a SATA cable going to the burner, we have a SATA cable going to the hard drive, we have one spare SATA cable down here. So a little bit of upgradability, disappointing that it is not a standard full SATA standard ATX motherboard or micro ATX but we'll proceed on. We do have the upgradability of a PCIe or PCIe slot down there depending on what you want to throw in there but I'll be getting this back together in just a second. So let's get this back together again. So do note with this, this has to be in a certain orientation it will only fit one way. Put it in on a similar well, Exactly the same as the wireless card, put it on about a 45 degree angle, and then push down. Next we're going to need the small Phillips head screwdriver. There we go. And now I'll go through the process of how to reconstruct this whole machine. So I'm going to push that down, and there's a small Phillips head screw, or screw hole for it to screw into. And that will lock down the wireless, uh, the SSD. So we're located down here under the nat rat's nest of wires. Sorry, my hand's in the way, but right here. Anyway, next up, we need to put in the ROM drive holder. This bit here goes to the back, faces up, and slides in this gap just over here. Like so. And next up from there, you need to put in three Phillips head screws to lock it back into place. So we'll go one, two, Three, and then with that back into place, I would say we're right to reattach the front. Do note down here there's a plastic nut or plastic bit of collar, or I'm not sure how to describe it. There's one, two, three that need to get pushed into the case first. So if I push that in here like so, then fold it up, it should just be able to keep going, and then go click. Click, click. That is now in its, in its position. Next up is reinstalling the DVD drive. That slides into the groove that's available in the front now. And you just keep pushing it through. In. Next we need to reconnect the power to it. So there is a small little black cable, or red and black wire on it. And that does push into the back of it. It will only fit in one, one orientation, one way. Now. OK, 
cable is made to fit, so it is rather short. There we go, that's sitting there loosely. Push in, clicks into position. Next up is reconnecting the SATA cable. Same scenario. Should just be able to line it up, it will only fit one way. And push, clicks into position. Next up after this, we have the hard drive tray. Ooh. Anyway, hard drive tray will only fit back in its original position, which does look to be, can figure it out. Ah. We're gonna slide this groove into there, and there's one at the bottom. So you tilt it, sit it in, rotate it, and push. And then we've got five Phillips head screws to put in. So one, two, my mistake, we have four, three, and the final one in the bottom, which is straight down here, four. Now, if you were to upgrade your graphics card and were wanting to get something a bit bigger, you will have to remove your hard drive tray. So this graphics card here is an ITF, ITX graphics. So as you see, right where the PCB ends is where the card ends. So we get to here at the end of the slot and it finishes up there. And to make it a bit easier for me, I'm gonna plug the power in first before putting the card back in. Put the card down. I need to get these two side by side, like that. And now I need to rotate and slide that in and push. And then when we go about putting the graphics card in, we do want to align it so it lines up perfectly fine in here. Need to push it out the front here. And when we push it down at the end, this little latch here is gonna flick up under that force. So I'll leave it pushed down at this point in time. And now I'm gonna bring the graphics card in. Go. Slide it in here. Align it with down the slot. So right now it's just loosely sitting on it and I'm just gonna push it down. Click into position. This latch here gets folded up. And then there's a couple of screws to put in there as well. This little bit here does fold down. That just puts pressure on the graphics card to swap, stop it from sagging. Being an ITX, it's normally not really gonna be an issue. If you have a larger graphics card installed, that may potentially help it, or you may potentially have to remove it. There we go. That screw in, and then from here, all we've got to do is put that side panel back on. So grab this, loosely sit it on, then push it forward, and from there we have two Phillips screws in the back to put in. One located here, one located here, and then you've reassembled your machine. So I hope that gives you a bit of an idea on what you can change with your Acer Nitro and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.